Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm making air fried chicken and basil pesto pasta. There's a lot to do so let's get into this. Okay, so you can see what I got here. I have a list of ingredients. All right, so I got everything you can think of here. I got lemons, I got basil, I have chicken, spices, I got my red lentil pasta, pine nuts, rosemary, Parmesan Reggiano. Okay, so this chicken that I got here, this chicken is organic, pasture raised, gluten free, free range, Grass fed, grass finished. Chicken. This chicken had a great life. Now we're gonna eat it. Okay, so now I need to prep my chicken. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open it up. So one of the reasons why I picked uh, air frying my chicken is because I have an air fryer that can rotate. This makes the job a lot easier. I don't have to put it in the oven for long amounts of time. If you are, if you are using the Instant Vortex, Plus, what you're gonna make sure that you have on hand is that you have this bracket to hold the chicken in, and you're gonna need this piece to take the chicken out once it's done, because it's gonna be very, very hot. All right, so once you have your chicken out, what I like to do first is I like to make sure that this rod for the Vortex Air Fryer goes in there first, because otherwise you're gonna have a hard time trying to uh, finagle, you know, finagle all the way through with lemons and everything else in it. So then on this, there's like two little grooves to put these mechanisms in. So you gotta find those and clamp it on. All right, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna take this lemon and I'm gonna cut it into quarters. You're gonna take these quarters and you're just going to put them into the cavity of the, of the chicken. Okay, so now that I got about half the lemons in here, what I'm gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna also fill this cavity with some rosemary and some garlic. I'm just gonna do half the amount of garlic, which it does call for three cloves of garlic. And I'm gonna use one sprig of rosemary. And continue stuffing your lemons in there as much as you can. And of course you're gonna squeeze in there, which is good. You're gonna get some lemon juice in there. And I got my last sprig of rosemary. I'm gonna put that in there. And my final lemon. So as you can see, trying to stuff one lemon in there is quite a bit. And this is a pretty big chicken too. So you, you wanna make sure that your chicken is well thawed out and doesn't have any ice in it. it. Takes about three days for your chicken to thaw out. All right, now that that part's done, I'm gonna try to lace this up as best as I can with some food grade string. And some of the stuff is falling out, so I'm just gonna make sure that it goes back into the cavity. That's probably gonna be the harder part, is trying to keep everything in. 
Actually, as you're cooking this, keep in mind that some of the stuff will fall out perfectly fine. Can't really do anything about it. Now the, the other pin that goes in here, it might hold some of it in, but not all of it. So as you can see, I got quite a bit of knots here. I was never a Boy Scout, so I'm not perfect at tying knots, but it looks pretty good. I think I'm ready to put the dry rub and the olive oil on it. But first what I need to do is I need to get a clean sheet here. This sheet's pretty, pretty filthy right now. Okay, so now I'm gonna start getting my spices ready. So I need half a teaspoon of salt, which I'm going with. I dice sea salt. One teaspoon of paprika. One teaspoon of garlic powder. And one teaspoon of dried oregano. Half a teaspoon of ground pepper. I'm going with coarse pepper. That's this call for one sprig of rosemary. I'm gonna go with a couple sprigs here because they're kind of small. So what you're gonna have to do with these sprigs is you're gonna have to chop them up into little pieces. Okay, so I got everything in here. I'm just gonna mix it all up. Okay, now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna coat your entire chicken in extra virgin olive oil. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. Make sure all that olive oil gets all around this chicken. The more olive oil, the better it's gonna cook in the air fryer. You're gonna have a nice chicken. While I'm here, I need to put in my little clamp, the very last clamp. Now that that's ready, you're gonna start spreading all your spices onto your chicken. Nice little dry rub. It's okay. So what I did earlier was I had to actually uh, stab some holes into my, my chicken. I don't have a conventional tool for doing this, so I just used a knife. So I kind of did that off film to not look like a crazy person. So if you have one of those things that you can use to like, I guess, what is it? Uh, it's Poke your turkey, poke your chicken. I suggest you use that because it'll get all those spices nice and incorporated into the chicken. So I layered quite a bit of spices on top. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna add some olive oil spray just to make sure that the spices hold onto the, the chicken as best as possible. I don't want too many spices falling off. So this helps. Okay, so now I'm ready to get my chicken into the Vortex air fryer. This is pretty easy to do. You just take your chicken, put it into the air fryer, like so. It only has one little latch in there, and the other part just a little hook. It's easy to do. Okay, so now that my chicken is ready, I'm gonna close up the Vortex air fryer. I'm gonna set it to air fry. I'm gonna set the temperature for 375, if it'll let me. And we're gonna set the time for 40, for 40 minutes. So we're gonna set the time for 40 minutes. And we're gonna check it, and if we need more time, we'll put it in for 45 minutes. Start, rotate, now you get a nice rotation going on there, hopefully you can see that. I don't think it's touching anything, everything looks to be pretty good, it's a big chicken, I'm happy with it. 
Okay, so that's just part of what I have to do. So now that my chicken is in the air fryer and it's cooking, you can hear that nice hum from the vortex, I gotta make my basil pastel. So I got the food processor out. Let's go to the food processor and let's start making basil pastel. Okay, so before you start making your basil pesto, you might want to check your cabinet because I doubt you have pine nuts. It's not something everybody always has on hand. But that's what you're going to need. You're going to need pine nuts, you're going to need uh, Parmesan Reggiano, olive oil, garlic, basil, and salt. So, Parmesan Reggiano is a pretty good product. I like using it a lot. It's very healthy for you. Basil is another thing that's actually good for you. So this is something that's actually lectin free, very good for your health. And I'm going to be making uh, lentil pasta with it, which lentil pasta, as far as I know, is actually good for your health as well. Uh, as long as you cook it in a pressure cooker. But don't quote me on that, but I do think that lentils are lectin free, as long as they're cooked in a pressure cooker. All right, so I only have 18 minutes left on my Vortex. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my Instant Pot and I'm gonna start making my lentil pasta right now. So the brand that I'm going with is Barilla, Barilla, however you say that, but red lentil pasta. So I got two boxes because I'm meal prepping. First step, what you're gonna to wanna to do is pour all your pasta into the pan. Get it nice and even in the inside. You're gonna add a bunch of water to it. Now you don't need to add salt, you don't need to add pepper or anything like that. Because we're gonna be mixing basil pesto with this. What you do wanna do is you wanna add some water, but only enough to where it just I think I have just enough in here. Maybe a little bit more water. Another issue you can run into is that your pasta can get dry and your pressure cooker, whenever you go to release the pressure on it, it'll start spewing water everywhere. So that's why you want to make sure that the water is at the perfect level. Which I think I'm okay, but I don't want to be too risky. Just gonna add a little bit more. Doesn't hurt. Put that guy in there. I'm gonna make sure that you are on that centerpiece. Now I'm gonna go for manual. And eight minutes is good, so you let it cook for eight minutes. Once that's done, let it sit for 10 minutes, and then you're gonna release pressure. Okay, so now that that's out of the way, we can finally start making our basil pesto. This is gonna be fun. All right, so with a high-speed blender or a food processor, which I got a food processor right here, fitted with an S-blade, pulse together nuts, garlic, and sea salt. All right, let's do that. So I'm gonna start by adding the pine nuts. Make sure this thing is actually set. We're set, we're good. These things are so stressful to use. If you ever use one of these, they're a pain. You gotta make sure everything is set perfectly right. Otherwise, it's just not gonna blend. It's not gonna pulse. All right, so I'm gonna start with my pine nuts. I guess I can turn it on. But all this has to be together. It's gotta be fitted perfectly. I'm not be having problems. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna put on low to start out with. And I'm gonna add my pine nuts. I don't know if the best way to do it, but there we go. All right, sorry about the noise. Oh, it says to pulse. Well, I just have it on low, so. I just have it on low, so it's perfectly fine. All right, I'm gonna add garlic. I'm gonna 
sea salt has a little pine nut in it. All right, let that blend. All right, now it says to add cheese and basil and pulse together and combine scrapping occasionally. I'm gonna scrap the basil, not the cheese. So, while you're running it, you know, drizzle some olive oil on it. And that's pretty much it. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my basil and I'm gonna start putting it into chunks in here. So real simple. I'm gonna get all my basil out of the bag. Get all this stuff out of the way here. You don't want this bad stuff in there. That's zooming in right. You want this stuff. This is going to be difficult. Come on. So I'm going to put my cheese in here. The unconventional way. Maybe add a little bit of olive oil. So everything can start getting smooth. And look. So we got some big giant stems. You don't want the giant stems, but you can have like these little stems. That's perfectly fine. So just, you know, start putting your pesto into the food processor. We got basil pesto. All right, I'm gonna give some of my pesto a try. Hopefully, it's tasty. That's really good. I like it. Okay, so I'm still waiting for my chicken to cook. My basil pesto is done, and I'm also waiting on my lentil pasta to cook. I got about eight minutes left on the pasta right now. I got. Three minutes of some change left on the chicken. I just gotta wait. Okay, so once the chicken's ready, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check it to make sure that uh, my chicken breast is at 165 degrees and that my thighs are at 185. So to do this, I'm gonna use a turkey thermometer. Well, chicken thermometer in this case. And I got a little prod here to prod the chicken with, to check it. So we're about to check in just a little bit here. It's almost done. All right, so my chicken is done. First things first, I'm gonna check to see what the temperature is of the breast. It's 
It's going up slowly, but it doesn't look like we're going to hit 165 at this point. All right, I'm going to check the thighs as well, because the thighs need to be 185, which is quite a bit. I don't know if we'll get there. Yep. Right about 163, so I'm going to take this out. So once you turn this on again, you got to press the air fry button. You got to set your time. We're still at 375, but we obviously don't want it in for another 40 minutes. So we're going to bring it down to five minutes. I'm going to hit start. And then make sure you hit the rotate button. Otherwise it won't rotate. Making this chicken is very time consuming. Alright, so just to get an idea here. I think about half of my lemons have fallen out of this chicken. You can see my rosemary, you can see my garlic. <sighs> Such a shame. I gotta find a better way to make sure nothing falls out of this cavity. On a lighter note though, the vortex is done. So I gotta let it sit down for, well I gotta let it rest for about 10 minutes. So we still wait. I don't think my thermometer is right. This chicken's still alive. Come on, I just need 165. Chicken thighs are getting there, but it's got to be at that temperature because otherwise you're going to have some redness in the chicken. I don't want that. Nope. Okay, so when all else fails, air fry. I'm going to up the temperature to mm, 385. Do it for another five minutes. Rotate. Rotate. Come on. There we go. All right. So my pot is now at uh, ten minutes. I'm gonna depressurize. Hopefully, we don't get a lot of water everywhere. Full steam ahead. All right, so now that all the pressure is gone, we can release. Oh, that's a lot of steam. Turned out good. I don't see any hard pieces. It's nice and soft. Tastes pretty good too. Oh, this chicken is boiling. And we're just about to check it to see if it's fully cooked this time. Crossing my fingers on this one because man, we have spent a long time on this chicken. Mm. For the best here. So I am hooked up to the chicken butt. Unfortunately, I'm not hooked up to the chicken breast because my chicken's backwards. And I'm at 158 so far, 160, 162. Come on, 165, come on. 165 in the chicken butt. All right, let's check the chicken thigh. If I can get to it. Oh. Chicken thighs in the 180s, 183. 185. All right, this is ready. Okay, so now this is where this comes into play, this little weird hook thing. You gotta be able to 
hook it onto the hooks and pull the chicken out. This way you don't burn your hands off. So let's see here. I'm hooked. There's a little red tab. Push the red tab in. There we go. Beautiful. As you can see inside the remains of our lemons and herbs, it's so beautiful and unused. This chicken looks lovely. All right, so I'm, I'm pretty proud of what I've been able to accomplish here, but I gotta let this chicken rest a little bit before I can cut into it. It's gonna be hard to move this thing around. There's like a, you know, the hot prongs are still out. This is good. All right, so right now the prongs are not too hot. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna cut off this string. Start getting that off of there. And take the prongs out. This chicken is perfectly moist. It's beautiful. I bet it tastes really good. I'm going to try a little piece here. Probably one of the best ones I've made. Alright, so I got a lot of chicken here. I gotta get this video wrapped up, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna get my bowl, I'm gonna pour my pasta in it, I'm gonna mix in my basil pesto, add my chicken, and then drizzle some Parmesan cheese on it, and we'll be good. This is what remains of my chicken. I actually have a a lot more to do with it still. But it looks pretty good. All right, my bowls are done. All that's left to do, sprinkle some cheese on it. All right, so this is it. It's done. It's really, really good. The chicken's good. The uh, basil pesto is really awesome. And I like the red lentil pasta, which is very healthy for you for the most part. It's better than regular pasta. You know, it's organic. It's uh, gluten-free. Can't go wrong with that. I hope everyone enjoyed the video as much as I enjoyed making this video. Basil pesto was really good. So anyways, uh, I got some things coming up in the future. Uh, waiting for my subscription box to come in for a shaker and spoon. It was delayed because of the bad weather that we had in Texas. Which, by the way, that's why I haven't been coming out with a lot of content because of what happened. But I'm doing great. Everyone's doing great. We're not having any issues here anymore. So I'll be having more videos coming out in the future. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Please be sure to like, subscribe. Catch you on the next one.